Aloha from Maui. Terry Edmonds here. Thank you for joining me today on this video about how to glue sneakers. It is nine o'clock in the morning on a Thursday in Hawaii, Maui specifically. <laughs> I am a 20 year shoe expert, I guess you'd say, but I am the island's only cobbler. I repair shoes, I make shoes, and I do many other things. I, it is nine o'clock. Oops, hold on a second. <laughs> I like to be able to uh, stay in touch with you guys and know where we are. All right, so here we are. We're actually in my studio today. Check it out. This is awesome. And um, today I'm going to go over some supplies with you. And I think we'll just go ahead and get started. Um, I have a YouTube channel as well that shows a lot of videos about how to glue shoes. There are a lot of sneakers, Air Jordans, things like that that come apart uh, regularly. And so this is a really great skill to have. So let's get started. Um, I did have uh, somebody write in and ask me how to um, know when you've got the right mixture of glue and thinner. And so we're gonna cover that today. But what I have in the uh, my Amazon shopping cart specifically for how to glue shoes is, I think I'll just come over here. So I have this um, Masters Thinner, which is really nice. That's what I use in my shop. Uh, they do offer it in the small can, which is what I put on the uh, Amazon shopping cart for you. But for myself, I happen to use this big Teflon pod. If you do a lot of gluing, um, you're probably going to want it. The cans that I have shown on the Amazon shopping cart have a brush in the lid. And it's not such a big quantity that you have to have the thinner to go with it. I think when you start doing bigger projects and you start using a pot like this, uh, you want to start using some thinner. It'll help actually let's see what condition mine's in today. So it's pretty thick and I need more in there. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that for you guys today. Uh, so the Teflon pot and it actually is supposed to be easy to remove the glue, but I haven't met a Teflon pot yet that I can easily get the glue off. Uh, but you do want it so that it doesn't stick, the lid doesn't stick. And then I will peel off the, the glue um, kind of regularly, believe it or not, I do. So there's that. And then I have this trusty old oil can. I mean, again, it's so hard to get the glue off sometimes that mine's kind of beat to heck. But uh, anyway, this is the ideal thing to have if you're going to do uh, crafts on any big scale with leather. Definitely. Um, do these two things. This is what I use to get into all the little crevices. Um, and you need that sometimes because this brush, you know, that's an inch wide and it's really hard to get exact. And for me, because I do such a large volume of shoe repair, I like to be able to get through it. And I don't want to make mistakes that um, cause me to do a lot of cleanup work in the end. I'm already going to do some finishing touch-ups, but we don't want to like be cleaning up a giant mess. So um, this is what's really great with that. And the key to picking out the right one, and I think I got you one there, is uh, you want a really small hole. If you get one with too big of a hole, it just, there's way too much glue to manage. So get it with a small hole in the front. It will actually hold a, um, you know, a safety pin, I can take it and plug the, the hole. So if that gives you any idea, you really want a very small hole. And I never have to add thinner to this. It stays in this airtight container and um, you're good to go. And I clean off the edges when I am doing the real delicate, intricate work, maybe with like the high end shoes, my Gucci's, the Prada's, things like that. And then when I'm doing a really big batch of shoes, I use my respirator. Um, I do happen to have some extra fans, that uh, ceiling fans that uh, help get rid of some of the vapors, but uh, for long term I wear my trusty uh, respirator. And I've included the link for you guys. I keep my backups, uh, backup filters and change them often. And it's just really simple, fits on like this, and then goes around the back and clips right back here. So. Um, Definitely recommend getting one of those. Uh, even if you're gonna use the uh, dyes. Whoops, fix my hair. Okay, hair's all right. <laughs> okay, so 
Um, the other tool that I have that I absolutely love is this oil can. This oil can I use all the time. Um, I use it to disassemble shoes. Sometimes the shoes will come off easily. Sometimes you have to put some thinner in and take a tool and just kind of pry the shoe open. And you'll see more about the reasons why we're gonna do that. We actually wanna get the dirt out and then ultimately we're gonna to move to the next item which is sandpaper. And you really wanna sand uh, the shoe, both surfaces and you want to do that because you want to make sure that you get the dirt out because dirt will just it's like trying to sand sand no glue sand you know it's really hard they don't stick if you have dirt in there or if you have old paint some shoes are synthetics material with a paint surface and it looks like leather but it's not and that paint gets old and cracks and you might have noticed putting your foot in the shoe and the, the, you've got little crap coming off on your foot. Well, that's what it is. And so you actually have to scrape those apart. And my point is, is that if you don't clean that up, even that paint leaves like a little tiny fine dust that makes it really hard to get the glue to stick. So you will always want to sand your surfaces. So getting rid of the dust is one of the reasons you want to do it. But the second reason you want to do it is you want to create um, gouge marks. You know, you, you want to give, especially plastics, you want to give them a reason to stick. And if they're real smooth and slippery, sometimes they won't. And uh, trust me, I have glued thousands of items, <laughs> and I'm telling you. So uh, I typically use, this is my whole gluing gamut right here, okay? Every once in a while, I will use a little bit of a super glue, and that would be for just tiny little spots that maybe I'm having trouble with, you know, for whatever reason. It's just easier to put a squirt of that, pinch it tight until it dries, and then I usually sand off because it'll leave a residue. So I sand off the residue to make it look nice again. And I have only ever, of all of them that I've tried, this Gorilla Super Glue is the only one that I like. I've tried a ton of them. So those are my suggestions. In the world of gluing, there are other glues you guys can go with. There are some that are more ecologically friendly um, and they stink to high heaven. Uh, this one's not so bad. Uh, this one is kind of a yellow color. So you wanna be sure to clean up any residue and that the glue's not showing because it'll look yellow. And sometimes if I all, you know, paint over it or whatever, you wanna do some touch up work. So. That's something that you can expect with this. Um, and then there are also some adhesives that bond, they're like there's, you put on a, a glue and then you spray it and it, it, it reacts, it makes the glue react and then it bonds tighter. And that's all possible. And I love learning new things, but I don't have time to take on those projects in my business. I do so much gluing that for the most part, this covers everything. And that's kind of where I stay. So I'm not saying this is your only choice, but this is what I like to use. All right, so um, definitely, excuse me, tray, chew, shoe jack. I think we're gonna uh, demonstrate the shoe jack today, which is awesome. And I like to wear an apron because uh, glue is very messy. And even as a pro, I can get it on things. So this is super fun. Hey, thanks for the stars, you guys. <clears throat> I had some shout outs last week and I will read them. If you guys repost this on YouTube, um, yeah, so please give me a shout out. So last week we had somebody from the Scotland Highlands. Wow. I went on to Google Maps and checked it out. It was so beautiful up there. I mean, it looks like it's the other end of the spectrum. I'm here in the tropics and it's gorgeous, but they were in this beautiful highlands of Scotland. Wow. So please give me a shout out. I do read them. I, I don't have chat set up here for us today, but we will someday. All right, so let's get to the important things. Uh, let's go ahead and start with mixing the glue. All right, and I'm, I'm only doing this one pair today, and I'll show you what we're going to be gluing. Uh, this happens to be an awesome Danner boot. This is the, called the Scorch Side Zip, 
And um, I happen to sell these in my shoe store called If The Shoe Fits. And I sell work boots and stuff like that. I specialize in the Danner brand. I sold this Danner shoe to this guy, uh, gosh, two years ago. And he's actually a goat farmer. <laughs> And as you can tell, I mean, this shoe was black and he beat the heck out of it. Um, and so anyway, uh, I'm going to glue it back for him. He's paying me to do it, of course. Uh, Danners have a one year warranty. So anyway, okay, so this is pretty typical of a, of a hiking boot or, you know, a very dirty athletic shoe. It's the same idea. The sole wraps around the shoe. Okay, so that we're going to work with that. Um, I, I usually like to take the entire, let me grab another tool here. So I usually uh, take the whole sole off first, um, but this one is so, Danners are so hard to get apart. They're glued so well together that I'm not gonna take the entire thing apart. It's just spots that he's getting here which is why this comes in handy because if I had the brush it would be a pain in the neck. So anyway um, I had kind of looked at these the other day and I could see that um, the shoe is slightly fused together. I'm going to give you guys a look. I'm going to come up close. So see in there? There we go. This light gray color right here it's fused together and I usually try to get those apart little spots like that but I happen to know Danner and Danner is so well glued that it's better for me to leave this shoe kind of still fused together and I'm gonna work around the edges first so all right so we'll do this shoe uh, first let's go ahead and mix our glue all right, so that's a little bit too dry, I can tell, and my pot, I'm gonna show you this too. <laughs> All right, so my pot, I don't know if we can get in there. All right, it has this ridge. That is the limit to where you wanna put your glue, is up to that ridge, okay? And this brush is going into right about there. So, um, when I do a full batch of shoes at one time, it's usually 20 or 30 pair, and I'll really fill it, but um, my, I'm at the end of my glue here. It's, I'm at the end, so it's gonna be pretty thick, and I'm gonna add thinner to it. Yeah, so it, see, it almost looks like taffy in a, in a way. And, good. I'm going to use my brush to clean it up and uh, let me grab my towels. Hold on. Okay, hold on guys. All right, so here we are. And uh, whatever, even if you're using the little bottle, be sure to wipe up the edge before you put the lid on, or it'll be hard to get the lid off. That's plenty. I'm only doing this one pair with you guys today. I'm actually working on heel caps today, <laughs> but uh, I get so many gluing requests. It's one of my most watched videos on YouTube. So there we go. You can actually put a lot of thinner in here. The key is just you really want to mix it up. So I'm going to give it a good stir and I'm not like whipping it fast because I don't want to get a bunch of air in there. You know, I'm just, I'm just folding it together. Yeah, I, his boot. <laughs> so funny. He lives kind of, I, I know where he lives on the island and it's kind of, this island, even though we're in Hawaii, it's actually has so many different types of uh, ecosystems. It's got 10,000 feet of arid and then at the top of Haleakala and then you've got the ocean with tropics and palm trees. Where he is, is uh, on one of the lava flows, old lava flows, it's really crumbly and rough and he's been wearing those, I know that's where his goats are. 
They have all, anybody who's been to Maui, tell me. Um, I think it's over like by the surfing goat dairy that they make cheese and stuff. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do a spot glue there and I'm just going to get my knife in there and sand it up just a bit. And because it's so dusty, let's really get some paper in there. I put a choice of sandpaper for you guys and it should do just fine. This is about an 80 grit, I think. And I can really just tell that I'm getting that dirt off, which is good because I, I know it'll stick. Very nice. Um, I don't know how many of you actually use uh, shoe cobblers or repair people in your town, but they do a lot of things. Uh, we can do, you know, snaps, rivets, grommets, shortening, straps on purses, belts, shoes, all kinds of things. And it's just good, they're good skills to have. Okay. There we go. Very nice. And just make sure this can, there we go. I like to get a really accurate shot of when the glue comes out. So I'm gonna just stick this in here and do this. Really get it in there. This is a work boot, so I can handle it kind of aggressively. And okay, contact cement is you glue one side, you glue another side, you let it dry for 20 minutes, and then you stick them together. So when you stick them together, it has to be exact. This one here, I'm wetting both sides, and I'm actually gonna push them up together so that I know that all the edges are touched. There we go, and I'm just gonna let that dry. And you know, especially in like this little, even though it's a little tiny toe area, um, it's an important part of the shoe because it's right in the front. He, you know, he could kick it, whatever. So we're gonna really let that cure. Let's see what time it is. It's 9.20, so we'll give it a fifth, you know, a couple of minutes on that. In the meantime, I'm gonna work back here. And I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, I'm gonna just cut this a little bit. Let me get my razor knife. Hold on, kids. All right, so here we are, and I'm going to go ahead and I, I have that tiny little piece I was telling you about, but I'm going to try to cut it because if it's only a small section and it allows me to open up the shoe more, that would be great. I mean, I, ultimately, I want to get as much as I can. Take some muscles because it's coming out on here, I think. Take a look in there. Yeah, it looks like it's, uh, they probably did that uh, fusing together all the way through. It's a little bit, see, it's kind of, I can put my knife all the way in there. I don't know if you can see from there. And right here, haha! -ha! See, I was able to get that side open right there. It was stuck before. And there's a whole bunch of grass in there. So, Oh yeah, see all that dirt coming out? Right like that. Have my rubbish bin. You know what? I'm gonna get my long hair out of the way. All right, so let's keep going. And I'm gonna just check around the entire shoe. See the sides are coming off, that's nice, we want that. Even up here. I'm sure this guy gets in the water. You know, he's he's probably, you know, watering the farm and stuff like that. I think he's got some acreage, so. It's kind of sticking right here. I'm going for it, because I think it's gonna give a little bit more. And uh, when you're doing your sneakers, Sometimes you get multiple layers, like this has 
the shoe, this middle layer, and the bottom layer. And typically, you want to pull this part, this apart, you want to pull this apart, and check it all. But because this is a danner, I'm pretty darn sure that uh, it's not going to, the other layers aren't going to come apart. So let's go ahead and really get in there. The, uh, the more time you take to prep the item, the better your chances are of getting a really good adhere adhesion. Adhesion, because it will adhere. <laughs> so that's good. We'll just kind of get in here a little bit. Wonderful. You know, we just want to make sure we get all that extra dirt. So I'm going to go ahead, I'll use my, all right, now in this instance, um, I am going to put in a lot of glue, watch. And I think, see how runny that is? That's a lot better. It's a whole lot better. But you know what? It's still kind of stringy, right? Uh, we don't want that. So I'm going to put just a smidgen more thinner. And I don't want it too runny. So you would think that maybe being thicker would be better, but it's it's really not. You want a nice thin, kind of a thin surface. Uh, yeah, when you get too thick, it's like squishy. You know, it's like putting rubber inside of the rubber shoes, and it just doesn't. They're not really touching each other. So again, I'm folding the glue. Uh, for those of, the of you that are just joining, um, I'm using the Master Cement. Ooh, that's very nice. That is perfect. So, that should answer the question of how, there we go, how thick do you want your glue? So I'm coming in here, and I'm gonna glue the edges, I'm gonna glue this side. And you want to get all the spots because if you leave some spots untouched and it's just more work you got to do later when you go back and do touch up work, which isn't a big deal. It's not a big deal when you got that thing, the oil can. There you go. I'll try to do this so you guys can see. Very nice. Now, because this is a molded sole, I want to make sure that all of these edges get touched. So I'm going to do this. I like to squish it together and then I wipe off any excess. Like I see some there and I'm doing it well. It's really wet because then it's easy to wipe off. Okay, then watch this. Oh, look how stringy it is. Okay, well you want that. And we're going to do this and you just get rid of the strings. If you leave those strings and you go to put it back together, if those strings actually cause, um, they're, they're very elasticy, and then they cause this space in between the two surfaces that don't allow it to stick together. So take my word for it and try it that way. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I don't wanna stick, I'm not gonna stick my um, brush in there I think I'm going to use my gun. This makes it so much easier. One of the other nice things about if you're able to get the entire sole off, it's nice you can get a better sanding job done, but uh, like this. And I'm going to put a lot in here because I'm going to squish these together since I can't get the brush in there and get to the edge. I'm going to do this like this. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and touch, push this together. And what that does is see it's got this excess glue and I'm having it work that glue all the way up to the edges so that I have uh, I'm going to open it up so I don't have any strings. There we go. That's basically it right there. 
Um, I think we've got some more on this side. Oh yeah, that's good. Let's see here. Make sure I'm getting way in there. Push this up. See, it's coming up to the edge. And I kind of don't mind that little bit of excess because I'm really going to let this dry well. well. There's a bit right there. Um, one of the other tricks I will show you here in a second. And there are so many little tricks to this. So, here we go there. I can tell. There we go. Nice. Okay, so there we go. I'm actually gonna put it on a fan and let it dry while we go and move on to the next side because it's a little bit different. So let me just turn that on. And there we go. So we've got that fan running and um, now we're gonna move on to the next one. So in case you guys are curious, this is a stitcher. This actually stitches a shoe together. If I had an example, I would show you here. Oh, here's a good example. Um, before this bottom sole goes on here, you stitch this two layers together. They go inside this, like this, and then this machine sends in a needle and another needle down and it stitches this whole thing all the way around. They actually did that on this after the bottom sole was put on. You don't see that a lot these days. So that's what this guy is. I love him. And then of course my shoe stretchers, I don't know if you can see those. And then I don't know if you can see this one. Yeah, you can. This is a nailer, and this, uh, the shoe goes like this, upside down. Watch this, this is really fun. And then you would bring this up here, and, woo! <laughs> shoots a nail in there. It's really great. Uh, so that's pretty fun. That's what I use this machine for. And uh, they're great. They're really old machines, and they were made right. Okay, so let's see. Try to pull this apart. Again, I think when they made it, they they fused this boot down the center. I can tell that's where the line is going on it. So I'm just going to maneuver around the edges. You know, make sure it doesn't have a bunch of dirt in there and rocks. Look at all these sides. really likes to stick around the sides there. I had tried to pull the, um, I had tried to pull the toe piece off, but it's really stuck on there. So I'm not gonna mess with it because that's the hardest part to get working right. So I say we don't mess with it. All I'm doing is getting rid of the excess dust in here. So, I sanitize every shoe uh, before I work on it. When it comes into the store, it goes into this really cool uh, bin that I created that has an ozone bar in it. And um, it sanitizes the shoe with ozone, which is really great. Um, the job itself is kind of dirty, as you can see. So I like aprons, I like my gloves. We'll take a look on this side. And we'll take out that uh, nail that I just put in there. So I'm going to do a whole series of videos about Danner boots. As I mentioned before, this is a Danner boot. This is from their uh, their uh, military line. And it's a great boot. Like I said, this guy's had this for at least two years and he works on a farm. And he has really just... Okay, I'm gonna grab one more very good tool that I got from Amazon.
I think I'll put this on my uh, Amazon shopping cart, but I love this set of tools right here. Um, I use them a lot for either taking out rivets. Um, this one, I'm, you know, I put that nail. It's just a wire, just a copper wire. And I put it in here, so I'm using this to just, boom, pull it out. Done. And I like this because it comes with a stand. It has all these different little tools. Wow, that is so handy. Um, I'll put that on my Amazon shopping cart for you guys because I really like it. I use it a lot. Okay, so I think we're about ready to just go ahead and apply the glue. Perfect. By the time we're done here, we will put together that other shoe. All right, so uh, this is about the consistency that you want for those of you that are, oops, just checking in. And again, just in case you are just checking in, we are using the uh, Master's Cement and the Master's Thinner. And on my shopping cart, I have it offered in uh, the smaller can with the brush and the lid. It's the best. I have thinner in here. I've got the glue in here. This is the Teflon pot that looks like a glue volcano. Um, but if you're going to do a lot of gluing, I love the Teflon pot. And so now I'm just going to glue. There we go. Thanks for watching, you guys. I love having you watch. I wish I had chat. Oh, I wish I was that techie. I'm so busy running my store and doing these awesome, fun videos that I need to upgrade. I'm really getting to the edge. Any spots that I miss, I'm going to catch at the end. You'll see that on the other one. See that? Oh, this is what I was going to tell you. So uh, I've got a lot of glue right here, right? So um, if I had this glue, if I had the shoe drying on the side like that, the glue would drip down and create a, a bigger blob here, which is not impossible to fix. The problem is, is it has more glue than the rest of the shoe. So it, it won't allow it to stick and close tightly. So you wanna be sure to watch that when you're gluing your shoes. And see, we're going to go back to this. And so I bought this. I have a, I had a shoe, I have a shoe store and I specialize and started special, my store specializing in shoes for women with hard to fit feet, large sizes, all kinds of stuff like that. And then it progressed into, I bought the local shoe repair business. The family had had it for about 30 years and uh, I took it over about 10 years ago. So that's a part of my business. And I'm glad because I can still help the people with hard to fit feet. Um, I do a lot of stretching. This is my stretcher back here. And I'm actually gonna be stretching those in tomorrow's video. So if any of you are interested, um, that's what I'll be doing there. And I'm really going to be bringing you guys into my workshop a little bit more. It's kind of fun and I love having you here with me. I have to do this work anyway. This is a paid client. <laughs> and we're all doing it together. It's awesome. All I need is my cup of coffee. <laughs> okay, so I've got plenty of glue and I'm just going to really um, let that cure. I think the other one might be ready let me get a, a check and let's see so the way to tell um, is that the glue should be not tacky anymore it really oh yeah see i can tell just by touching that like it's just it's not there's no residue it's not tacky and i had it directly under the fan so I, I could let that stick. I could push it together right now. But I think because I really want this to stick, I'm gonna go grab another shoe that we can do together because we still have a few minutes. So uh, let me grab this shoe and then we'll let this dry for just a few more minutes. And then, uh, so I'll be right back, hold on.
Okay, so we just brought this one in um, a couple days ago. This is a Nine West, and I've let it sanitize overnight, and it's coming unglued. Because, oh, this is what I was talking about. Let me show you guys. Inside here, inside here, this is peeling. That tells me that this is paint on fabric. So that paint's gonna keep crumbling off and the only way to get rid of it is to scrape it with like a screwdriver, get it all, all the big chunks off, and then take a fine sander. Well, the problem is that it's uh, causing it to come out on the side here. It's old glue and if it happens to one shoe, it's definitely going to happen to the other side. So I told the client that. I was like, bring me both because you're going to get caught out there. <laughs> anyway, so I am really glad that I opened this up to show you guys what I'm talking about. I'm going to actually come over there again. Let's take another look together. So this residue here is coming from this here and it's a little bit of paint on fabric so i'm going to make sure to get all of that off and i'm going to do it with some sandpaper you know i just want to let's see here so i want to make sure that i get rid of all of this right there you know, and I'm gonna do it a little bit more over here where I've got a table. So I wanted to give you guys a close-up of that. There we go. Okay, so here we are. Really put some elbow grease on it. I wanna get rid of that stuff because it will keep my shoe from staying glued together. synthetic material okay it's hard to see see that right there because that is lifting and flaking the, it's pulling away from the shoe it's not no longer stuck together so I have to be sure to get rid of that and I'm not going to do the whole strap that's going to be her prerogative uh, but for me since I guarantee my work and by the way, my website is terryedmonds.com. If you guys want to send me an email, um, you know, ask me any questions you might have, I'd love to answer them for you. So uh, this had some residue that I had to scrape off. I had to get rid of that, otherwise they weren't gonna stick. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna glue where these straps went right there. Like that. And I'm going to glue the insides of these. Let me do this other side here. Um, we might, you know, depending on how our time goes, uh, if you are trying to work on a sneaker that has a color to it, or white, I have a plumbing company on the other side of the studio, so. <laughs> If you hear them, they're a little bit loud. It's like they're always dropping stuff. It's funny. All right. Um, so here we go. If you have a sneaker that's got a white sole or colored sole and you can't quite clean it all the way up after you're done gluing it, 
use some Angelus paint. It's acrylic leather paint. I've done videos on them. I'll do a hundred more, I'm sure. Um, but you can just touch up over, it's, it's plastic or leather, depending on what you're painting. And that stuff works like a gem. It makes them look great. I've done a couple of really fun uh, Air Jordan videos on them. All kinds of fun stuff. Okay, so I think this guy's ready to assemble. Let's do it together, you guys. I'm getting a really cool workbench for my studio, my YouTube studio, and my Amazon. It's gonna be so great. Okay, so here we go. I want to bring this up to the edge as close as possible. So I'm gonna start here, and I'm really going to push it up. Okay, and, and that looked so easy. I, I, they're not always that easy. <laughs> so the key is, if I would have had, I made sure that this outside piece and this inside piece didn't touch while they dried. And by doing that, I was able to kind of stretch the shoe over. If it had been touching, it, it never would have stretched. I would have had to use my, uh, my uh, little nippers and I would have taken them and I would have tried to pull this thing or I would have taken my screwdriver inside and tried to kind of maneuver it so that it came up. Uh, my clients look for exact perfectness so I have to do that. Uh, I don't mind. Okay, so here we are. So now I'm gonna do this front. Okay, now what I'm doing is, getting this hair out of my face, I am trying to push the shoe down and I'm really going to get this to curve up. Sometimes it's hard to get that to happen. And so I want to make sure it gets up as close as possible. There we go. Very nice. So first, I'm pushing the sole down so it gets to the edge. I really want to get it to the edges where it's supposed to fall in line, like a puzzle. Okay. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. All right, so here is where it was pretty wet. And because it didn't dry enough, it's not quite sticking. But that's OK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this, cut that line apart so it doesn't leave this barrier. And that, that'll stick. I'm going to put more glue in here. This needs a bit more glue right there. This was wet, so I'm just gonna move those strings. This was wet, I'm gonna move those strings. And I'm gonna move this one, like that. All of these, I'm gonna let them sit under the fan for probably maybe 30 more minutes. I'm gonna really let those dry. And when I push them together, they're gonna stick. So that's gonna be great. Um, just to show you how I work in my professional shop. Oh, uh, we're in it right now. So I'm gonna uh, just give you an idea of something else I do here. So this is kind of on a whim. This is my big sander. <laughs> and I have a mirror there because then I can see people when they come into the store. But anyway, um, see, yeah, that comes in. So this is a wax. This is called Yankee Wax. So it comes in a bar and uh, I cover this wheel and then for instance right here on the back of his shoe where that line and that seam is I'm going to just so uh, it really helps to hide and usually if I'm doing a if it were a really nice, fancy shoe, I would do all of this so it all blends in, but you can just see how now, in the back, 
you can't even really tell that I glued it. So, uh, so that's what I'll do with the whole pair. Uh, that is very typical for, um, like I said, like the Air Jordans or something, okay? Um, let's go back this way. Here we are. So uh, there we have that. Uh, like I mentioned to, um, hello. <laughs> Oh, you guys, you're so patient with me. I love you. Thank you. Here we are. Okay. All right. So um, let's cover the supplies one more time. Uh, Masters cement and thinner. Teflon pot. Must have. A must have. Like, I'd have this even if I didn't have this. And then this is my thinner, which is nice because I can put it on a Q-tip and just get little spots that I need. And uh, I'm gonna just show you, because we're almost out of time, on this little red one that we were working on, um, the glue's still wet, so I don't really wanna put it together yet. But ideally, I would put this strap on, I would hammer it down, and then I would glue this side, glue this side, and let it dry for about 20 minutes, and then put it together. I happen to have this really cool, uh, this is called a shoe jack. And uh, let me put my gloves on. I put some leather gloves in the options for you guys. When I use uh, my razor knife and all my big work here, I use my gloves, these leather gloves. So uh, I know a lot of you don't have these tools at home, so just to give you an idea of what mine works like, and maybe you'll come up with something creative. I might find one on Amazon for you. like that and that's pretty much how it goes so I gluing is probably my number one repair set of repairs and as well as shoe stretching so tomorrow nine o'clock ish <laughs> no nine o'clock uh, nine o'clock we're gonna be uh, stretching the length and the width on this demonstrating this awesome machine and I'm also going to be demonstrating um, what to do if your boots are too tight for you. And I look forward to it. Thank you so much for joining me here in my studio. Oh my gosh, you're in my repair shop. From Maui, aloha.